You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Ask Drone You. As always, my name is Paul. Pablo. And I'm Roberto. Anyways, welcome. Very glad to be hanging out with Paul, hanging out with you. Appreciate y'all so much. Um, yeah, it's humbling. I don't know, just looking at the world and everything going on around us. Um, our friends overseas, et cetera, et cetera. Because we do have a lot of listeners overseas too, right? Mm-hmm. Europe, even in Russia, We're believe in it or not. Believe it or not. So Three figures of countries. Yeah. Which, um, which actually, know. you know, this is something that I wanted to bring up. I've seen a couple of news outlets um, do stories and I, you know, I rarely go on Twitter, but I retweeted a couple of them. And these stories are about Ukrainian drone pilots, citizens of Ukraine that have Mavics, that have Phantoms, that have Inspire 2s, that have, uh, you know, drones, Mavic Airs, whatever you want, whatever you want. And they are being recruited by the government to provide aerial intelligence to the defense ministry. And, you know, a lot of questions come to mind, like, I wonder if they're getting paid or whatnot. But to see a foreign country see the value in their drone pilots and be avidly recruiting them, I'm sure that there are benefits one way or another, frankly. Um, But to see how drone pilots are being recruited to really provide useful information uh, during this awful war. It's fascinating, Rob. I mean, it's really, really fascinating. It makes you wonder, does having the skill of being a good drone pilot, could that pay off in the wake of a crisis? Sure. Well, you sound, uh, you don't really sound upbeat about it all. Having a drone pilot to, to assist with the efforts, mm-hmm. is that what you're saying? Mm-hmm. A skilled drone pilot? Yeah, I mean, I think it could be one more tool in the arsenal, I guess you'd say. Um, but they need a lot of tools. They do. They do. Yeah. So, um, you know, for everyone here at Drone U, I think we're sad to see what's going on, obviously, uh, in Ukraine and with Russia. Uh, and I think something that we have to remember Um, is that in these times where everyone is getting, you know, super mad and super upset at Russia, you got to ask yourself a question. Is it Russia or is it Putin? Is it the Russian administration? Because I think it's very easy to draw conclusions and make absolute statements like everyone in Russia might be evil. Well, that's not true. Uh, You know, it's kind of like saying if, if our president... Uh, made a decision, is that representative of all of America? No. I mean, there are literally more than like half the country didn't vote for him. So you can't essentially blame everyone. Um, That said, I bring this up just to say as a reminder, like if with all the awful things that are happening out there, you know, be careful uh, not to make absolute statements. Uh, We, we personally have staff uh, in Russia, you know, photo, video editors, etc. And, uh, you know, it, w- we don't really get the full story, I would say, in American media. And I think it's pretty clear that a lot of Russian people are very uh, dismayed and disappointed and depressed with the decisions of their government. And it's having a massive effect on the population. And if there's one absolute statement that is true in the regards to war, it's that in an, in the wake of war, the people who always lose will be civilians. I mean, I think that that would you agree, Rob? I mean, yeah, the helpless people, right? That <laughs> it's a form of prison, ultimately, right? Um, I don't, yeah, I think it's pretty clear. There's uh, people that. Um, are in Russia that are losing. And I don't, yeah, I mean, it it sucks. It just sucks all the way around for everybody Mm -hmm. over there. Um, Yeah. Even the people that are supposedly um, benefiting from that, from the system, the regime, if you will, through whatever means of, you know, having their needs taken care of, so to speak, even them, they're suffering in some ways, right? Mm -hmm. Um, They might not know it, but 
We're getting really political. Well, I mean, I know this, I mean, it's kind of, first of all, I think it's car- hard not to address it. I saw how drone pilots were being kind of drawn into this. Mm-hmm. And I think it was, you know, something to bring up and, and discuss because we didn't have the new show this week. Uh, Miriam is, is unfortunately sick. And uh, with all that to be said, I think it was kind of an important topic to discuss is that, you know, as drone pilots, we have a lot of value and so much value that in the wake of a crisis, the government is avidly recruiting drone pilots. Um, I think it says a lot about the skill of being able to fly. And I think it's also important to, uh, you know, discuss ideology. This this show is not obviously about Ukraine, um, but I want to bring it up because I think uh, I'm number one, very curious of what other people's opinions are. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm also curious as to what pe- what drone pilots in the states think. You know, what if something happened here? You know, would you uh, essentially, you know, grab your drone backpacks and go help our military? You know, like, would it come to that? I don't think it would come to that. But it's these are all questions that I think uh, are worth discussing, you know, just to think it through. Right. I mean, I think one thing that you and I can agree on is that having kind of conflicting conversations is how we really put ourselves in the shoes of our counterparties and really think issues through uh, wholly, meaning we're thinking it through on both sides of the argument to really get to a a position that we feel uh, confident about, if that makes sense. Yeah, certainly in that sense, you can't, I don't think you can make a, a solid decision in any respect. Um, name the subject, name the paradigm, I don't care what it is, until you understand both sides yeah. and allow yourself to listen to both sides. Um, <laughs> there are exceptions to that, I guess, like Putin. He has no side, but <laughs> he has no listenable side at this moment. But no, I think in terms of drone pilots and helping, I think generally speaking, the human nature is they we want to help, mm-hmm. right? If we have an opportunity to help, then we're going to, I think we're going to do that. Hearing about, man, just the, uh, the, the, the passion behind the Ukrainian people, such that there are people that were like families, young families living in Poland, for example, right? Mm-hmm. And then they... So obviously the the women and children stayed in Poland, but there were men going the opposite direction of the potential of the people leaving Ukraine, right? There were men going back to fight. And even here in America, knowing some families with Ukrainian ties, very, very direct Ukrainian ties and their sons saying, I want to go fight. (laughs) I'm like, it's crazy. Um, So yes, the human spirit is generally speaking going to want to help in whatever way we can and going to want to defeat evil in Mm -hmm. whatever way we can. And so I think we're definitely seeing a lot of that going on. And if drones are involved in that, even better. Yeah, I mean, I th- yeah, I, I think it's important uh, to discuss. So, and I think it's important to to think about. I know also because Lisa, her family is Ukrainian. Um, it's interesting how there's so many Ukrainians living in Poland. That was a big yeah. It, there was a big kind of migratory pattern uh, mm-hmm. over thousands of years. Those two countries are very connected. Yep. So, but anyway, let's get in. Uh, let's get into today's question. Uh, kind of regarding the best drones for Zoom photos. Uh, I have to say, this is probably one of my favorite questions because this caller uh, gave us some compliments that I really genuinely appreciate, and uh, it really, you know, we're here to help people. That's that's the. That's the juice, um, that's the fuel that really propels us forward, knowing that we're really helping people get outside, get better at their craft, make money, have a lifestyle, have adventures, have you know new exciting things, and make life more fulfilling as a whole. So I'm really grateful for the compliments that he gave us, but I think it's also important to say the question is regarding you know Zoom photos, but your ultimate deliverable, I think, will determine the true answer to the question, which I want to try to keep in context as we answer this. What up, Rob? What up, Paul? What up, John? You family? It's your boy Earl out in San Diego. Um, Rob and Paul, I'm so thankful for what you uh, have done for this community. As you, I was able to uh, take my drone game to the next level and even do my first commercial. To all you listeners out there, that was all credit to the drone you aerial cinematography photography videography courses that they have so if you're not plugged into the community you need to get plugged into the main bank because they're really like 
the heart of everything drone and they're pumping fresh blood on a daily basis. All right, so to my question, lately I've been receiving many requests for close aerial shots for like wedding events, uh, sporting events, um, church events, and other events where I know my phantoms and air to west will be too distracting for the subjects and the audience. For example, there was a groom this month who wanted me to get a close-up of him and his bride at um, their wedding during the ceremony. I also have uh, a few coaches, uh, football coaches, who want aerial shots and close-ups of the players on the field uh, for various reasons. And, you know, I have a local church who wants me to get aerial shots of baptisms and even the worship team performances. Although my Air 2S has a digital zoom, it's just, I'm just not really feeling it like an optical. However, I'm aware that many of the listeners may be okay with a digital zoom. So, um, in consideration of optical and digital zooms, my question, Rob and Paul, is what is the best drone for close-up photo and video shots? Thanks, guys. Man, Earl, thank you. Really appreciate the kind words. And, man, I just hear the passion in your voice, the energy. I love that. What's really cool, too, is that clearly you've got a lot of opportunities coming your way. And, and that's awesome. Super happy for you. But I think it's clear that your energy, I mean, I think that energy, like, it attracts that, right? And so he's talking about, I mean, how many things did he lift? list? Five, six, seven, eight different opportunities. And I can just tell a big part of that is because of your energy and the way you kind of pursue life. And that's awesome. It is awesome. I think it's also a good lesson to all of yes, you other exactly. listeners out there that uh, sometimes you got to carry that energy and you've got to have that passion. And if you don't have the passion about a job that you're doing, as Rob so wisely said the other day, then then why are you doing it? You know, you got to have the passion. And that said, another thing I want to bring up before we get in this question is it just reminds me of how having some of these problems and figuring out the solutions for them is a uh, driving factor or a catalyst in really advancing one's skills and advancing one's um, ability to practice and thus the business as a whole. Mm -hmm. You know, problem solving is kind of the, f the, the fun part of being a drone pilot, of giving, being given a challenge and figuring out a solution. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think people that go into business for themselves, they're naturally inclined that way. Like I think they get inspired by solving problems, right? Mm -hmm. It's like like with my kids. I'm just going to be honest. None of my kids are STEM kids. <laughs> they're not excited about that at all. So I tell them, you got to do it. That's part of school. Use it as an opportunity to learn how to serve, solve problems because ultimately that's what it's about. Yeah. It's not memorizing a bunch of formulas and geometry, whatever, blah, blah, blah. It's learning how to solve problems and push through hard stuff. That's going to that's gonna get you places. Totally. It totally is. Um, anyway, thank you again, sir, for those compliments. We do appreciate it. And uh, as you know, we love helping people out. So I love, you know, hearing these testimonials and love helping people like you, especially uh, San Diego, man. What an awesome place to fly. So um, that said, uh, first thing first, um, there's a couple of things that we want to talk about to get through the nitty gritty of these questions. Um, one of the things I want to talk about is he mentioned that in weddings, in these events, Rob, that oftentimes these, uh, some of the drones that he has that he's flying might be too loud because you have to fly them so close to a right. subject. That's the key. To get the shots. One of the things I wanted to bring up is kind of like, you know, I feel like with a lot of these weddings, with a lot of these clients, is that you can set kind of a standard or have an accusation audit regarding the sound of the drone. You can also do plans. Like, for example, in Rob's son's wedding, we planned to essentially pause the ceremony right before they walked down the aisle so we could pop a bird up, which was an Inspire 2, very loud, but it had that 50 millimeter lens on it on the X7 so that we could punch in and get really beautiful stuff. It was cool. 
It was cool, but I feel like, too, because uh, the pastor was like, hey, we're going to pause for a second. Before they walk down, we're going to have a drone take off and capture this amazing moment in a way no one else has, blah, blah, blah. It may be a little loud, but, you know, everyone, it'll be fine. You know, kind of like telling everyone, yeah. Set the stage. Ex- yes, thank you. And and by the way, in terms of as long as I would say that, well, number one, the bride <laughs> is on board, right? But also the the wedding, I guess the groom, and just sort of the, the inner circle, if you will, as long as they're on board, nobody else is going to care, right? I mean, that's a good point. And, and yeah, if they that's... do, <laughs> do you care that they care? I don't know. Maybe who is the wedding really for? Oh, I dropped the bomb right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, seriously. Uh, and so we can say, I don't know. It wasn't a huge wedding. Probably a couple hundred people. Maybe it was a decent size, Rob. And everybody's totally cool. They just got it. I think people are like, "Wow, that's pretty cool." Yeah, right? I never heard a single complaint. People were coming up to me, and they're like. Wow. Yeah. That was awesome, you know? Yeah. And, and so I think like what you're saying, planning, that's a that's a great point. And as long as everybody sort of knows what's going to happen. And then you even, we had you out there on the rehearsal, right? Mm-hmm. So you rehearse it. And now that doesn't mean you're going to fly the Inspire right down. <laughs> that's a bit much. <laughs> I've done that before. I mean, we rented the 50 millimeter for this purpose. Yeah, literally. So there are ways to get around it. But anyways, um, yeah, carry on. But anyway, that said, I just think that as the drone pilot, there are ways to alleviate the issue of sound by essentially having that accusation audit with your clients. Say, look, sometimes it's going to be loud to get some of these shots. I think it's in our best interest to just notate that at the beginning of the ceremony and let people know that it's not going to be the whole ceremony, but there may be tidbits of the ceremony that you might hear a drone, etc. It's also, I think, um, you know, this guy is a perfect candidate for Kara's business course about automating the entire Mm. process of doing these wedding things. Honestly, maybe we should reach out to him and offer him a a big discount and see if he would like that class because I'd love his feedback. But that said, he could benefit from that class and having those automated systems to filter their clients and say, how close of shots do you want? Do you have a PA system? Okay, because honestly, this was one of the questions I didn't ask you. I assume there was a PA system because there was a DJ and music and whatnot, Mm -hmm. but there was no PA system. So I think that that is something too that can overcome the sound is that if the ceremony is on a PA, it's going to be really, the sound may not be as much of an issue. That said, if you are shooting these Zoom shots for pretty photos, meaning you want to shoot in RAW, you want to be able to edit them and have the maximum capability or capacity of editing, your options are going to be a lot more limited than, say, Zoom shots for logistical stuff, right? Football like games. Like the football coach stuff, yeah. Yeah, soccer games. Oh, the, some of the, oh, is pastor and the church. By the way, that is so cool. I really want to get into, like, choir stuff. There are some uh, traditional African-American churches down in the South. I would dream of flying their choir outside. I mean, oh, oh, the sound that they create is just magical. Um, anyway, that, that said, uh, I think it's really cool, but getting back to shooting pretty shots, if you wanted these pretty shots, you are going to be limited in kind of, uh, your options. So that said, you know, one of the drones that we were talking about, Rob and I were talking about was the Mavic three mm-hmm. crazy, awesome telephoto camera. Yeah. Okay. Limitation JPEG only. You cannot shoot a raw limitation. It's going to be a 12 megapixel photo limitation. It's a small sensor. So you're really limited on, on editing capability. And I would say the Mavic three, because honestly that drone is so quiet, 65, 70 feet away. You can't hear it at all. Mm -hmm. Um, now inspire Two. Okay. I know you're probably like, Oh wow, that's a big loud bird. It is. But with an X seven, and say the 50 millimeter lens, your true field of view is more like 65. I can't remember exactly what it is mathematically due to the sensor, but you're, you're pushing in a little deeper than 50 millimeter. I would say, what was I flying? 100, 125 feet away from the wedding uh, for Jake's wedding-ish? Yeah. 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 I mean, you could still hear it. It's loud, right? But you don't have to articulate the drone as much because you have full motion of the gimbal. You have that touch control where you can essentially set up the touch on your controller to move the gimbal and get these really beautiful shots without moving the drone. So that is a benefit. You're also, you have a massive sensor on that X7, that Super 35 sensor. You also have full raw capability. Uh, So, you know, you're really able to get nice, pretty photos. 
it is going to be loud, but you can fly further away. Um, there are also, uh, I would not recommend the Inspire 1 uh, Z, was a Z3, I believe, the first zoom camera. You wouldn't. No, because it's really, you're back to a 12 megapixel camera, you're back to JPEG images, you're back to the one issue they never fixed on the Inspire 1, they did it on the 2 but not the 1, was the ability to uh, live stream and video or live stream and take photos at the same time cuts out the live stream. So I know some wedding people do do live streams on these bigger weddings, so I wanted to make that known. Well, even a potentially a less expensive option would be the Mavic 2 Enterprise with Zoom, right? I mean, it's an option. It is an option. Limitations, it, I'm sure. It is an option. Uh, 48 megapixel sensor, but the way that they get that is by essentially creating, you know, multiple pixels and kind of splitting them together. I forget the technical name for it. Um, uh, you know, some people call it pixel doubling. Uh, but that said, uh, again... When you're zoomed in that much, it's a combination of optical zoom and digital zoom, which is a part of his question is he said, I don't like digital zoom. Well, for all of you listeners out there who may not be privy to the difference of optical zoom and digital zoom, optical zoom means we're using our glass or a lens to essentially get that zoom. So you're still using the full sensor, you're still getting the full capability of the sensor, and you still have a lot of editing capability, meaning a lot more play with the photos. When you're in a digital zoom, essentially imagine your computer screen and we are essentially taking a portion of that screen and just blowing it up, right? That's a digital zoom where we're essentially saying, hey, I know the picture is this size on the sensor, but let's just show this middle part right here. And then bring it closer. And bring it closer. So mm. you're, you're, you're getting pixelated, you're getting yeah. grainy. Shoot out with your cell phones. That's yes. digital zoom generally, it's, right? It's exactly correct. Um, so that said, um, I understand why he wants a camera with optical zoom, which goes back to my first recommendation, i2 X750 mil. I honestly, if you're going to buy the i2, if you don't have it, just get the 16 mil and the 50 mil. Why? Because... Honestly, you can get the most, you don't have to spend the money on those two uh, lenses. Um, honestly, when you're shooting, like say 4K60, the i2 is going to crop in on the sensor anyway and give you more of a 35 millimeter equivalent rather than a 16. So if you really know how to use the camera and get the most out of it, you don't need to spend the extra money for all four lenses. I, I kind of think that's a waste myself. So it's hmm. um, a nice hack. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now that said, you know, he talked about getting zoom shots for football, sporting events. He also talked about church, etc. This is where I have a question, right? Because are these shots, are these photos for logistical purposes, aerial intelligence, right? Meaning football games. Are we trying to discern how a player is moving, where they're moving to, the rate of change? These are all you know, photos where we're gathering information, we're gathering data, mm -hmm. maybe they don't have to be that pretty. Yeah, I'm sure that's part of it, just because that's actually been a thing for a long time with drones and some coaches wanting some of that stuff. But you could actually also see getting some really cool action shots of kids mm -hmm. making, I don't know, making a move on the football field or whatever, right? And getting some up close from an aerial perspective, obviously not flying right over them. Mm -hmm. But, and, but even, even then, I don't know that you need to do a lot of editing and that kind of stuff. I and mean, that was kind of my question is, are these aerial intelligence photos, meaning you're not making them pretty, so something like the Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual Advance is fine, you know? Yeah. Mavic 2 Zoom even. Mm -hmm. uh, I would honestly prefer the Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual Advance because it's going to be quieter than the M2Z. You're going to get more zoom out of it. Uh, and honestly, the color, in my opinion, is is a lot better. You get a lot more... Uh, of the available color gamut in just what I'm seeing with my eyes. That said, you know, for some of these football games too, you wonder about flying an older bird M210 and, you know, maybe an M300 that's newer with something like the Z30, where now you're getting like aerial intelligence on a whole new level. But I don't think that's in this guy's wheelhouse. I don't think that's what he's looking for. And so, you know, if it comes, again, just to recap, if it comes down to pretty images, I2 is going to be loud. It is, okay? But with that 50 millimeter X7, you're going to get really pretty shots in RAW. They're going to be great. 
If you need logistical or aerial intelligence photos, Mavic 3 is probably going to be a phenomenal tool for you. Probably the... Not the Cine, by the way. You don't need the Cine no, for that. No, not the Cine. And if you haven't seen my review video on the Mavic 3, talking about the hack of buying the Mavic 3, aka buying the Mavic 3 and the RC Pro, not buying the Cine, and I explain why, check out that video. I think you might find it really interesting. Um, but a Mavic 3 for, say, three grand, and Rob, he's going to get really incredible zoom uh, from that camera. It will, though, be a combination of optical and digital zoom. Mm -hmm. And the photos are amazing. I would say for the money, the zoom or the telephotos are going to be better than a Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual Advance. So also Mavic 3 is quieter. It's, it's insanely quiet. Um, but I really don't like some of the new control aspects of these newer drones, in, in all honesty. Um, but that said, I hope this answers uh, your question. I think, you know, with kind of a, a, a layered plan of accusation audit, talking about sound, isolating parts of the wedding that are going to be okay to fly, uh, you know, and then kind of dis discerning what type of photos you really want, what what's truly capable, you know, maybe busting out the i2, maybe busting out the Mavic 3, Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual for logistical aerial intelligence shots, Mavic 3, um, maybe get the RC Pro remote so you can get more out of it. That said, there are other options out there. Um, you know, going back to the FreeFly Astro, you know, and that drone, you could throw a bunch of different lenses on that A7R4, which is a 60 millimeter or a 60 megapixel uh, sensor, right? You could really have an extreme amount of flexibility. I don't know what the Gremsey gimbal will handle, though. Hmm. I don't know if you add a really big telephoto lens to that camera, how much CG deviation mm -hmm. that gimbal will really be able to handle yeah. and then you're also getting into the five figure price range so that's a lot of a lot of bucks mm -hmm. i don't know maybe you just use a an air 2s and depending on what it is right just kind of get in there close yeah depending again depending on what it is cause they're not that loud um for example if it's sports and you have the ability to get in somewhere i don't know call it from the the back of the end zone and kind of creep in like that from up high, you'll probably get some cool shots Yeah, for much less money. So it's a lot of options. There are a lot of ways and, to get it done. And you just brought up a really important point, right? What is your budget? What are, what are you willing to spend? I still think the Inspire 2 is a phenomenal aircraft all around. And also- So in, versatile. It is. And in these environments where you've got a lot of people, a lot of interference, you still have a lot of the safety features that you don't have on these newer drones. Uh, so, you know, uh, my, you know, you guys know my, my rule here is that if you want to fly with high skill, you have to have the foundation of safety to be able to do that highly skilled close proximity stuff. And with some of these newer drones, you don't have those safety features and bad things can happen very quickly. So... Indeed, which all leads to practice, practice, practice as well. Yeah, whatever do, you're flying. Do not get rusty pilot syndrome. Take it from your boy, Paul. Don't get rusty pilot syndrome. We are all, all... Uh, Susceptible. Thank you. That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> Susceptible to rusty pilot syndrome. Case in point, Paul, last week. So that said, we all crash. And uh, if anyone who's an experienced or expert drone pilot says they never crash, they're either lying to you or they secretly suck at flying. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Or they just don't push the boundaries. You know, they're very careful. Back to the second point I made. <laughs> okay. oh, there you go. That's true. <laughs> anyway, um, but that said, really appreciate the question. Good luck. Let us know if you need help. And um, again, you know, I love that you're getting into these shots and, uh, you know, wedding stuff and, and church and choir stuff. I would really recommend that business course that we put out to automate a lot of those processes to make scaling your business uh, easier. You're going to make more money. You're going to have more time. I think it's a win-win all around. And for everyone else out there, if you haven't checked out that course, it's worth its weight in gold. So thank you very much uh, for joining us today. As always, my name is, is Talkie Talkie Paul. <laughs> I'm just Rob. Have a great day.